Okay, so um, uh, a little background, a little bit about my background. Uh, I remember growing up in a small neighborhood in in uh, Jalan Ipoh, Taman Kotlian, Jalan Ipoh in Kuala Lumpur. Some of you know that place. It's uh, predominantly uh, a Chinese area. Um, I in fact went to a Chinese kindergarten uh, when I was uh, younger, so that was fun. And um, uh, we were really normal people, normal family. Uh, we lived in a two-story uh, link house then. My mom was a teacher actually when she first graduated from university and my dad was in the government service like most Malays at that time when they graduated, they'll go into the service, in the civil service. And um, after that, um, uh, I remember uh, we, we followed my dad uh, to America, United States of America and we stayed there from 1985 to 1987 uh, when he did his masters in economy at that time so we followed him when we came back uh, i went to um uh, uh sekolah rendah kebangsaan st john's in bukit nana kuala lumpur in kl and then went on to the uh, secondary school and from then um on in when i was in form 4 and form 5 i actually went to a um boarding school in Penang, in a, in a in outskirt of Penang, which was in Balik Pulau. So that was a very interesting experience for me. Uh, I remember uh, how, how much I didn't want to be in, um, in a boarding school all the way in Penang. That was the first experience away from the family. I was so used to living with the family in Kuala Lumpur. And then um, I had to be there in a boarding school, in a hostel in Penang. And that's when I, I was bullied. I was bullied in school because uh, they bullied me just because I was different. And that, at that time, uh, I, I really couldn't uh, accept the fact that I was bullied uh, just because I was different. Um, but then again, uh, I soon realized as I grew up, uh, now as an adult, I soon realized that you know our the society that we live in, um, our society doesn't really um, what do you call that? Celebrate uh, people who are different, people who are extraordinary, people who are, are different from the norm. It's so much easier being the norm rather than trying to be extraordinary. I think what our society needs to learn is to to accept uh, uh, people who are more different, uh, who are more extraordinary, and accept differences in the society. Right. So that's that's an experience that I had. Uh, most people would think that uh, being bullied in school would be uh, something negative, a negative experience in life but I personally uh, decided to reframe that uh, experience and instead uh, chose to become stronger from it so I believe that I become a stronger person being bullied in school so I moved on so no worries about that so then uh, when we moved on um, I went to university and during university we during my university uh, years um, uh, my mom actually started the family business so that was in late 1990s and you know um, just like any businesses uh, when it started uh, we really struggled uh, during the beginning stages of our businesses and one of the business that we had earlier was uh, a canteen business so I remember um, operating the canteen so I had to wake up really really early 5 o'clock I had to be at the Pasar Borong and that time we I had to be at Pasar Borong Puchong uh, in Puchong right now and um, we had to get all those you know raw uh, provisions and the, uh, the ikan and the ayam and all those stuff and then bring it back and cook it at the canteen uh, to serve to sell to the school we, we ran a canteen school canteen in Subang Jaya actually and um, I remember every time uh, during recess, we've we got to concentrate on selling as much as we can to the school kids because um, that's all the revenue that we're going to get for the day when we sell to the school kids during recess. And I remember every time after recess, I would have to count and refold all the one ringgit notes because the kids would crumple all of them and you know it would be squashy and they'll just be throwing all those one ringgit notes. And it actually take me one hour just to fold the one ringgit notes together and, uh, and, and, and have it nice, neatly um, rubber, uh, banded and that's what I brought to, I brought to the bank, uh, to, to, to bank in uh, to, to our account. So that was one of our earlier things. And secondly, we had a security services business and that was fun. Um, the first job I had in that company was as a security guard because that's what my mom wanted to train me as. 
she didn't want me to be arrogant being someone who graduated in IT. That was my first degree in IT. So, you know, being the, the boss, uh, the son's uh, boss, she didn't want me to disrespect uh, security guards. So, the best way to do that was to make me work as a security guard. That was my first job. And I remembered um, my first salary was 500 ringgit. At that time, she paid um, security guards 815 ringgit, but um, she just um, paid me 500 ringgit just for fun, you know, just to make me know how valuable money was. So I remember that that was the early stages. And you know, in the early stages of any business, it was really difficult. We struggled. Uh, it wasn't very easy. I remembered uh, how difficult it was just to pay our salary. I mean, when you start a business, don't even talk about uh, profits. You know, you have to struggle, you have to work hard, you have to really do it uh, just to be able to pay your salary. Um, and uh, I remember in some months, we, we didn't have enough to, to pay the salary because our clients didn't pay in time. So uh, what we did was we paid our staff salary first and we just um, went on with whatever we could go by. So that was how we really started. And uh, in the beginning stages, I remember driving a, a very old um, kanchil. Uh, it was a red kanchil. And I remember just opening and closing the door was uh, an alarm system on, it, on its own because it squeaked so bad that it just sounded really horrible just opening and closing the door. I, I remember driving that uh, red kanchil because the business was uh, couldn't afford a, a better car. And of course, subsequently, we upgraded the cars uh, and then I went on to driving a Satria and then I drove a Proton Vira for the longest time and the Proton Vira was a really good car I think it was it brought us a lot of good luck it brought us a lot of good business um, it was actually used by my mom before she handed it over to me and I used I used that car for the longest time so that was um, that was interesting how we we struggled in the beginning and um, I remembered um, coming into year 2000 I remember uh, uh, how my mom had a big break. It was a big break for us in business. And uh, it wasn't really about how she made it that really profoundly impacted me. But it was what she did after that. Instead of buying a luxury car, as uh, I would expect most people to do. And in fact, I asked myself what I would have done if I was in her position at that time. If I had that big break, I would perhaps buy myself a flashy car, a big luxury car, right? But instead of buying a luxury car, what she did was she bought several properties. And that really profoundly impacted me. Instead of buying that flashy car, that luxury car, like most people would have, uh, she it chose to invest in property. So I thought there must be something special about property investment that I should know of, that I should learn more of. So that really spurred uh, my journey into learning more about property investment. So yeah, so that was a little bit about my background. Thank you.